Hey, Chris Jenkins, credential member of the media, Covenant Carolina Panthers for Charlotte Vibe, a.k.a. Man of the People. How is everybody doing this Valentine's Day? Hey, happy holidays. <laughs> I won't say Valentine's Day because guys are like, yo, I don't do need to be telling me happy Valentine's Day. So happy holidays. Happy hump day to everybody out there. Man, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Julius Peppers, the first player drafted by the Carolina Panthers, is to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, took place over the weekend. By the way, did anybody enjoy the football game? Who all were you rooting for? And actually, you know what? Here's a new question that I'm going to throw out there for everybody watching. Where are you watching from? Leave a comment. Let me know. Where are you watching from? Are you in Charlotte, South Carolina? We got people in Ohio sometimes, California, overseas. Let me know where you are from watching this video. But Julius Peppers, congratulations to you. Again, the first player that was drafted by the Carolina Panthers to make it to the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> he joined another player that had some significant time with the Carolina Panthers and Sam Mills being inducted into the Hall of Fame as well. And we have some guys that may be joining him coming up soon. But as of now, he is there, Julius Peppers, and today, had a chance to talk with Julius Peppers about the Hall of Fame and just a little bit about his career and some good moments. So that's what I'm going to do with you all is share the video from that conversation from earlier today and also continue to ask you to subscribe to the channel. If you like the content, if you enjoy it, hit the like button and coming up just a little less than two weeks now, I will be in Indianapolis continue to get you ready for the draft. So that'll be the combine that I'll be covering. And also let me know your thoughts on wanting to see some projections, right? Uh, talk about free agents, talk about players that we may get. If that is something that is of interest to you, let me know and I'll work on getting that content up for you all, okay? So let me shout out to Ali Bodrick. What's going on with you? Thank you for tuning in. Let's go ahead and step through this. Let me get, get all my my gadgets together so I can present everything to you properly. So let's see. Let's start way, way back when Peppers was drafted by the Carolina Panthers. The team was a bad team. Did you want to be on a better team? Did you think you were being put in a good position? Did you think you should have been the number one draft pick? So let me, without further ado, go ahead and start to queue up these videos for you guys to see the conversation with Julius Peppers. I, I wasn't concerned, first of all. I wasn't concerned about coming to the team that was one in fifteen. Um, I saw it as a challenge, as an opportunity to come to come in and be a part of building, building something. Nobody wants to go to Super Bowl champion already. I mean, I guess some people do, but um, you know, you want to come in and, and and work for it. So So he was ready for it. He he wanted the challenge, and that's you know, that's one of the marks. Of great players now you still have like some people that come out and they only want to be on this team they try to block you know or say i'm not never going to play for that team that wasn't what julius pepper was about he was about wanting to be a part of building something and proving that he was great and that's something that he did he talked about in one of his first games as a pro and man this how many people out there go to say man i don't feel like i'm that old but then when you hear Julius starts to talk about his career, you're like, man, I guess it has been a long time. He talked about his first game in which he was playing up against the Baltimore Ravens. And at the time, I believe he said Ed Reed was on the team. Ray Lewis was on the team. And Deion Sanders. Now, we all know about Deion Sanders because he's as about as opposite of Julius Pepper's personality as there is. He's currently out there coaching in Colorado. But it's like, wow, Julius Peppers was playing against Deion Sanders. <laughs> That's crazy, but but interesting. And nevertheless, you know, I've had a chance to to watch him play. Good stuff, right? And I even had a chance to kind of have a fan moment with Peppers. And I was flying to a game in Green Bay. Oh man, about four years ago, perhaps. I forget how long ago it was, but I was flying to a game in Green Bay. Yeah, I, I forget even where the, this, we boarded the plane at, maybe in Chicago, because it's hard to get a direct flight to Green Bay. But nevertheless, boarding the plane to Green Bay, it was one of the smaller planes. I think the one row by two rows kind of deal, three rows total. And lo and behold, who's like 
two seats in front of me or two rows in front of me is Julius Peppers, big old guy. Getting, you know, everybody, when you get on those smaller planes, you kind of feel like this. So it was funny to watch him get on that plane and, and take that trip to Green Bay with me. I'm sure he does not remember that. But let's continue on to talk about and share with you all some of the conversation from Julius Peppers today. He had some memorable people that was a part of his career and talk, talked about one of the people that he felt like had one of the biggest impressions, biggest influences on his career. Coach Fox. It was Coach Fox. I learned so much from 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 him and, and his staff. Um, Mike Turgovat, uh, Jack Del Rio at the time, uh, Sam Mills. I, I, I think I came into a pretty good situation with great leaders, great, great men to learn from. Uh, so, you know, I, I wasn't saying a lot because, you know, you're a rookie, like, like, be quiet, like, don't, like, what are you talking about? So I just used to listen a lot and watch Mike Rucker, Brent, uh, uh, Buck, you know, uh, Moosin. I, I, I used it, and to add to that, you know, I, I look around the league now and the locker rooms now, and it's like, I feel like that's one of the things that's missing uh, in the locker room right now is like that, uh, you know, that veteran guy. You might have one or two, but for the most part is, you know, you have one or two old heads in there and then it's the rest of it is all young guys. So who are you really learning from, right? So I think that's the thing missing, like as for me, like I just mentioned, all of those guys and a lot more, Mark Fields, uh, Mike Menner. Like we had a bunch of guys that had already been in the league that knew how to do it, that you could just learn from and watch. Now I feel like that's a part of the, the game that's missing. And, you know, it comes from the CBA and all the contracts and stuff like that, where they phased out that kind of guy. But um, I think, I think that some of these teams could benefit from it. Man, did he, did he not take you down memory lane? when he was talking about all those players did he did he i mean he, he took it even previous to the 2015 season with the super bowl just so memory lane right of the days when we were still upset about hey the panthers can't win back to back have back to back winning seasons but they were still they were you know if you take the averages they were still here versus now we've come all the way down to where there's been six seasons of a drought of making the playoffs. And we had an absolute terrible record last season. And he talked about having those veteran guys. And that goes back to, again, the present when you go to think about the fact that Dan Morgan has his work cut out for him. Dan Morgan has so much work to do because we have so many needs personnel-wise, player-wise, on this team who do you have that's a veteran that has some really good experience other you know brian burns is still considered young he's on his first contract <clears throat> getting off that contract his rookie contract trying to get a good deal like what player do we have on his second contract that is good that is great um, and we don't have it we don't have that guy so you know dave canales is going to play an important role in getting this team in the right direction, but even more so, Dan Morgan has to get us the pieces in that building to help get a bigger or better foundation for this Carolina Panthers team. So again, I'm sharing with you guys a conversation that was had earlier today with Hall of Famer Julius Peppers. And if you're enjoying the content, please feel free to hit that like button. It costs you nothing. That's what I appreciate the most is a like. Uh, but also subscribe to the channel, help us continue to grow. We're still trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. Um, let's continue to go through this content that we have from Julius Peppers. Now, I was just talking about Dan Morgan having, I would say unquestionably the biggest role with this team and turning them around. Maybe you could say Tepper has, but if Tepper's doing what he said and giving some more control over to these guys, they're gonna be checking in with him. Dan Morgan's going to be the guy, right? What does a guy like Peppers, who just 
took us through the history of the Carolina Panthers and talked about the importance of having some veterans in that locker room and what does a guy that played with Dan Morgan, what does Peppers think about Dan Morgan? I, I have great confidence in Dan, as I did when I played. Um, <clears throat> he was he was uh, similar to Luke in some ways, where you know you see this you see this clean, nice, clean cut guy off the field, but then when they get on the field, they turn into a whole new person. This is, this is like a whole new person that you see that's really fierce, that's really passionate about the game. So that's how he that's how he approached it, and um, he was a great leader. He was a great communicator, and um, I think he can handle it. I think he, he he's been in he's been in that in that world for a while now, and um, I thought it was a I thought it was a great choice by by uh, Dave to to bring Dan and Dan Dan. He knows the locker room. He knows the guys, and um, he's a Panther. So I, I think he's going to take great pride in in doing his job and doing it well. Uh oh, audio problems, audio problems. My bad, my bad, my bad. So <laughs> let, let me start over. I'm sorry. So, man, I, I kind of forget what I was saying, but I'm, I'm just going to sum it up and say that Dan is a guy that you go to believe in because he was a former Panther. He, during his press conference, mentioned that some players that we don't have are the kind of players that we need to have such as a, and he pointed to him in the audience, you know, Musin Muhammad, who was there. He pointed to a Jonathan Stewart that was there. He pointed to a, a Thomas Davis that was there. You know, mentioning those guys that he says are dogs and need to have that kind of mentality back into the locker room. Luke Keekley and talking with Cam Newton over the week in Las Vegas, who Cam, by the way, says, you know, I'm not a football player anymore. I'm a YouTuber. But he was talking with Luke, and, you know, Luke mentioned that everybody there was super competitive. Josh Norman, Cam Newton, he went down a list and wanted to win. And if you weren't one of those guys that was just diehard competitive, like, you need to go. You need to get out of here. Dan is a guy that, because he's a former player, because he also flipped that switch as um, – Dan did, I'm sorry, as Luke did, 
you, know, you have some confidence that he'll bring that kind of guy back. Thanks to my wife for calling me, letting me know that I pressed the mute button. I'm sorry, it happens sometimes, but appreciate you guys for letting me know also in the comments that I pressed the mute button. Let's continue to move through this. Peppers was a really darn good athlete. Part of the reason why he was so good at being, you know, and becoming a Hall of Famer. In college, he played football, he played basketball. He was asked about, well, did you feel like you made the right choice though? Did you, did you ever have an opportunity to play basketball? Um, here's his response on basketball versus football for him. It's been well documented that basketball like was my first love, right? So um, it was one of those things where I had to give it up for my best interest because I knew that, you know, yeah, that's your dream to play in the NBA and you probably could do it if you wanted to, but it's probably not the best move for you. Um, you know, I, I, I was having those thoughts before I went into the draft and um, I think I could have played and had a pretty solid career, but, you know, it, it wouldn't have been all-star Hall of Fame type level. So I think, you know, when I think back on it, I think, you know, it definitely was the right choice to give it up and and go to and go to football route. So Julius Peppers with the business decision, as Deion Sanders is famous for saying, um, "Yeah, I could play, but football was really the better choice." Um, and I think a lot of Panther fans are happy about it. I mean, heck, could have been some Hornets fans because we you know we, we we won't get into too much talking about Charlotte pro sports and how we struggle at times. But about, again, the conversation with Julius Peppers today had some availability with the media recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Who will he choose to announce him? Will that be Coach John Fox? You know, he touched on that. I played that clip for you already. He doesn't know. You know, Peppers has gotten some information from the NFL about that Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It has some deadlines that are associated with it. He's not at those deadlines yet, but he knows that he has some decisions to make to let the NFL know what he plans to do. And you know he'll be making that decision shortly, but just certainly Coach Fox would be a great guy to do it. Let's go ahead and wrap up on this. Julius Peppers is a guy that is a few words. He's, he's quite a humble guy, certainly a hard worker. And he has just been filled with honor after honor after honor this year from the from the Hall of Honor at Bank of America Stadium, or is it called Ring of Honor? I think it might be the Ring of Honor, to now being in the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, the ultimate of recognition and accolades for an NFL player. He's been doing a lot of media. He, he's been doing a lot. And so it was asked about, Pep, how have you been able to, how have you adjusted to all this, these honors that you're getting and all this media that you're doing and all these talking people? I, I it's I really been blessed to to uh have these things come um right behind each other and, and you know it's been a great it's been a great uh couple of months. So um you know I understand that with those type of honors, certain obligations come with it. So uh you know um it, it's not my favorite thing to do to film you know film you know film all of those things for for NFL films and stuff like that and do so much media uh this past weekend at the Super Bowl but i understand that it comes with it and and, and this is a once in a lifetime thing it's not going to it's not going to be something where i have to do it every year so you know uh, i'm fine with doing it now and I'm, and i'm happy to do it there you have it so that was me saving a lot of time, taking some excerpts from some high, from the highlight conversation with Julius Peppers today. Carolina Panther drafted Hall of Famer, first one in our history. Next up is going to be Steve Smith. Could it be Luke Keekley, who's going to be eligible? Cam Newton is around the corner from being eligible as well. Will Cam Newton make it? I don't know, but I will tell you this. I'll keep you in the loop for everything pertaining to these Carolina Panthers. I'm going to also be getting you ready 
for the combine and for the draft that's coming up soon. So I encourage you to stay tuned, subscribe, hit that like button, turn on your bell notifications so you know when I go live in case there's any questions that I need to answer on your behalf. Thank you so much, Watson. I'm Chris Jenkins reporting for Charlotte Vibe.